Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from EasyRoadAutomation.com and welcome to part 22 of our API testing with Rust Assured on Cucumber course. And in this video, we're going to talk about contract API testing with builder pattern using Lombok. And before watching this part, I would strongly recommend to watch part 21 because this video is going to be a complete continuation of our previous video. Lombok. Project Lombok's builder is a useful mechanism for using builder pattern without writing boilerplate code and we can apply this annotation to a class or even a method. And again guys, if you remember in our previous videos, in our part 21 video, we wrote and discussed about builder pattern and we saw the importance of having builder pattern and how it eliminates the problem with the telescopic constructors with the POJO classes. But we also saw that there were a lot of boilerplate codes like you're going to write a static builder class and then you're going to write the getters and setter operation for each and every POJO classes. So if the object is going to be very, very complex, then you probably have to write the same kind of code for each and every POJO classes that makes or introduce a lot of boilerplate code writing. And that's the reason this Lombok plugin is going to be very, very handy. Because the Lombok plugin gives a way that how you can reduce your boilerplate coding. So the first and foremost thing that we need to be doing for working with Lombok plugin is to install the Lombok itself as you can see in here as a Maven dependency. So once we install this Lombok plugin, we then can also install the plugin within our IntelliJ IDE or any IDE of your choice. So this way it reduces so much of the coding that you are currently doing in the existing code bases that we were discussing in our previous video. So the current POJO class for the post that we have is going to look something like this. As you can see, we have a post class and then we also have a builder class and then we call this particular code within our code and we worked with it. But we also know that in our earlier videos we had a uh, complex classes like address and locations and things of that nature. But now in order to simplify things for the post class if we install this particular builder pattern the only two annotations that we need to be using is the at data and at builder for the post class. That's it. This is the only thing that we need to be doing within our code or within our POJO class and that way this is going to eliminate so much of our codings that we were doing all these days guys. You can see that the code has now tremendously reduced from around 70 lines of code to just 3 lines of code or maybe 5 lines of code. That's it. This is the only thing that we need to be doing for our post class and this way it increases a lot of code readability and removes the boilerplate code that we have written all these days. So let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that I'm going to flip to my IntelliJ IDE. Alright so now I'm in my IntelliJ IDE and before I started this video I have also installed the plugin within my IntelliJ IDE. So if you go to the uh, settings and then to the plugin, you can see that I have already installed the Lombok plugin. That is an, which I'm really not going to be doing as of now at this particular point. I'm just going to cancel it. But just make sure that you install this particular plugin within IntelliJ IDE so that you can start working with it. But within our project with our pom.xml file, we don't really have the Lombok plugin Maven dependency. So we need to somehow install Lombok within our project as a dependency. So for doing that, I'm just going to go over here. And I'm going to search for Lombok Maven. Uh, this one. I think this is the latest version. I'm just going to copy it. And then I'm going to come all the way over here. I'm going to paste this particular dependency. Just going to save it. And you can see that the, de the dependency ha has been resolved. And there you go. So now we have this particular post class with the builder class. So what I'm basically going to do is I'm just going to rename this particular POJO class folder or the package so that I can make use of the builder pattern and you can see that because I'm going to check in this particular code in the GitHub repo this is going to create so much of confusion. So I'm just going to show this in Explorer and I'm going to make a copy of this. I'm going to paste it over here. And I'm going to call this as POJO without builder. 
and this is Pojo with Builder. So the one which you have is going to be Pojo with Builder basically. I'm just going to leave it uh, and we can see that we still have got these guys over here. So I'm just going to call this as Pojo. Uh, let's rename this to without builder. Copy this. I'm going to paste it over here and the address is OK and the location the posts and the login body so you can see that this is going to be a separate package which we are not going to be using at all but just for your reference because the students who are going to be learning the earlier videos are going to find this particular class missing within the github repo so just for their reference like how we evolved this particular code i'm just going to hold this guy as it is over here but the code that we're going to be changing are these codes that you are seeing over here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce this particular builder pattern. So as I told you, the 50 lines of code or maybe 55 lines of code is going to be completely shrinked into, as you can see here, that's the data. And you can see that it is telling me which particular uh, dependency that it will be using. So I'm just going to hit Alt Enter and I'm going to use the Lambok Maven dependency basically. It's going to save it and you can see that we're pretty much good to go now and now if i go to the posts of this particular code you can see that it's showing showing us this particular error which is fine because we also need to add the at builder over here so once i add this if i go back in here you can see that this var will now throw us an error, which is fine. But the builder that you can see in here is going to be this builder. So you can see that build is, builder is actually coming from the lumbok. And the var, I can change it to posts, basically. And this one, I can change to posts as well. And you can see that this is throwing us an error. The reason being, I don't really have to use this particular new keyword in here. You can see that the code will now completely transform into something like this. And you may be wondering like, what is the big deal with this particular piece of code and what's really happening? And you can see that within this particular assertions, I've just called the post.get author and it is automatically coming as well. And within this particular post class, basically I have not even written any of the getters or the setter, but even if I hit the dot, you can see that it automatically brings me all the getters and setters. So how is this actually coming in with the Lumbok plugin? How it is generating all these kind of steps? So basically, if you see the structure of this particular class, once I added this particular data, it automatically added the get author and the set and also the builders class over here, which is pretty cool. And now let's say if I just remove this particular builder, you can see that the builder has been completely gone. And once I remove the data, you can see that it now becomes just like a class with just three properties. So the Lumbok plugin actually generate all these cool stuff for us automatically with the plugin which is, which is already installed in our IntelliJ IDE. And now this Lumbok plugin is what doing all the magics for us. And now how I can transform this code is going to be even more fascinating. So now if I just go back to my posts, I can even simplify this particular piece of code. Something like maybe I don't really even need this particular builder pattern because I don't really have to go through all those particular problems now. I just kind of call this particular post.class like how I used to do for the earlier code that which was there without builder pattern. So I can just call the same code here. Maybe I don't even require this particular piece of code from here. I can just call this particular post.getBody. Uh, and then you can see that this particular code that we were using before is now going to be legal as well, which is pretty cool. So now I can just call the post at class, but still it is going to use the same builder pattern guys. You can see it automatically brings the get author, get title, get ID, set author and set titles and all those stuff, including the builder pattern. Now everything is working fine without any problem, right? And now if I try to execute this particular piece of code, 
we will be getting an error here and you can see that it is going to tell us that there is no uh, default constructor as you can see it is trying to bind uh, and, and it couldn't be able to uh, construct an instance of the POJO of the posts so it's going to be the same error that we discussed in our part 13 of this course which is going to be adding a default constructor but it doesn't really make any sense while using the Lombok plugin to do that so basically you can see that with the, with the POJO's post class we have used this builder pattern which you don't really require because you have not used any one of those option over here within our code so probably you can just remove the builder alone because we're just using the getter and setter operation we will talk about how we can even extend this particular code with the builder pattern in our next video but as of now you can see that this particular code doesn't really require that particular stuff so i can probably just leave this guy as it is because I'm just going to call the getter operation. That's what I'm too much interested in. And now if I try to execute this particular piece of code, you can see that the scenario got succeeded and the test has got passed, which is pretty cool. So this is how we can actually use the Lombok plugin to do a greater job for us. So this reduces too much of our codings that we were doing all these days. So we can even reduce the, uh, the login operation that we were doing before using the Lombok plugin. So I'm just going to get rid of this and I'm going to put the data. There you go. And use the, oops, use the Lombok. That's it. And you can see that it has been reduced tremendously. And also I can use the Lombok for the location as well. So I'm just going to remove this. I'm going to put our data here. That's it. And you can see that it is done. And similarly for the address, I can remove all of them over here. And I can put at data. And there you go. So we're done. So now we have the address, location, and body. Very, very super simple code. Then compared to the code that we were writing so big all these days. Right? So this code is now reduced tremendously. And now if I try to even execute the complex operation code over here, you can see that the test has got part successfully. So this way you can see that we can reduce tremendous number of codings using the Lombok plugin and with the Lombok package itself. And this is again a builder pattern as well. We'll see even further with the situations of using builder patterns because we have not used the at builder yet. We will be discussing about that, how we can set it in a body or maybe in a header, and then how we can extend the particular piece of code in much greater detail. So once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.